chit-chat with each other. It's kind of like when you go to a movie and everybody wants to talk during the movie. So, if, you know, those are things, expectations. So when they start to play, there's a time to be quiet and listen. There's a time to clap. But you need to practice your home training here. And I'm trying to give you and your parents a compliment about how to act during the play. If you can't behave appropriately, if you cannot behave appropriately, you will be removed and you will not get a refund for your money. So please behave appropriately during the play. Enjoy the show. Okay, and then when it's dismissed, we'll go back to our third block class. So they're going to get started here in just a second. All right, hope you guys all have a good Thanksgiving. And thank you for being here today. If you all do well, this is something we may do again. Okay, thank you.
You might want to get to the bottom of that. You don't want anything nice silverware to go missing. I'm not concerned about that. She's a real nice girl. I just love the idea of hiring someone with a past. She can't be more than 18. She hasn't had time to have a past. Honey, it's the 80s. If you can achieve puberty, you can achieve a past. Yuck. And now, how do you make this coffee? Like you said, I poured the hot water through the thing. Where did you get the water now? It was boiling on the stove. And did you notice the hot dogs at the bottom of the pot? No. Go make some more, please. I'm so sorry. That's OK, dear. I love a good hot dog just to go with my cream and sugar. She's not an international spot. But if she works out, I may let her rent the garage apartment. I thought the twins lived at their college. Recent developments. Louie's going off to LSU, and Poot is going to Baltimore to work with my cousin. My babies are growing up. I can't believe the kids are old enough to leave the nest. You know I was a child bride. I look on the bright side. I have places to visit now. I've always wanted to go to Baltimore. I heard it's the hairview capital of the world. Here they are. I'm so fat I couldn't feel them. The recipes? Now this sounds delicious. It is. And the biscuit makes it so simple. And this one's for my daughter-in-law. She said you can't go to a function in TikTok when this is not served. Now, are the chocolate chips semi-sweet or milk? Milk. Is the carol syrup light or dark? Matter of taste. Where's the other one you were telling me about? Cup of, cup of, cup of? Oh, that one's so simple. You don't even have to write it down. It's a cup of sugar, a cup of flour, a cup of fruit cocktail with the juice. You mix it all up, bake it at 350 until it's golden bubbly. And that sounds awfully rich. It is. So I serve it with a side of ice cream to cut the sweetness. Give me a piece of paper and I'll write it down for you. And now, give Miss Clary some paper. It should be stuck on the fridge there under the crawfish. Oh, and here's her article on Christmas time. <laughs> that man! <laughs> that is so annoying. Try to the next door to her. Hi, everybody. There she is. There's my girl. Come break my neck. Sure, me. It's so good to see you. Morning, Miss Clary. It's not that I'm unfriendly. I'm just worried about my nails. What a pretty color, Shelby. I hope this doesn't dry too dark. If it's too dark, it will never do. You know the colors are never the same on the bottle. That is said to be true. This is drying way too dark. Practically pink my foot. Truvy, do you have any nail polish remover? Here. Where's your mama? Right behind me, I thought. Hi, I'm Shelby Eatonton, soon to be Lattery. Hi, I'm Annelle. I'm new. Is Annelle's first day? Well, Annelle, you're working with the best. Anybody who's anybody gets their hair done at Truvy's. Absolutely. Now, Shelby, you know I will walk on my lips to avoid criticizing anybody, but your father is about to make us all pull out of here, and that's not good for my business. Well, Daddy should be finished with his yard work soon. I hope so. You're not the only one concerned. Mom is about to have a fit. She and Daddy have been fighting like cats and dogs. But they're just anxious with so much going on. No, they're not. They try to create as much tension as possible in any given situation. It's a creed they live by. You know, I was reading an article in Family Circle about tension during family occasions, and it seems it can cause a lot of stress and trauma. And the thing I found most interesting is that stressful times can unleash deep, dark hostilities that can make your hair fall off. They're fighting about patio furniture. Jackson and I would never fight about silly things. Are you married now? Oh, I hope that coffee's better. It smells right. How pretty. Princess Grace. Did you bring the picture of her you like I asked you to? Here it is. Study it carefully. And here's the baby's breath. This is so exciting. I feel like I'm present at the creation. There's something so wondrous about how a bride looks. It's beauty in its purest form. Now, where are you going to put this baby's breath? There's no room in this picture. You just stick it in. It's meant to frame my face. Baby's breath is part of my whole decoration concept for a total romantic look. Miss Clary, what cute shoes. You think so? They're a little too basic for me. I'll probably give them away. Those are too cha-cha for words. If you give them away, I'll buy them from you. What size do you wear? Well, in a good shoe, I wear a size 6. But a size 7 feels so good, I buy a size 8. They're 8 and a half. Perfect. Hi, Mama. Look at Miss Clary's shoes. Uh, 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 those are mine. Is this a riddle? And now, this is my mama. How are things at the house? Fine. Weezer Boudreaux just this second dropped by to talk to your father. One of both of them is probably lying in a pool of blood by now. Hello. Did you say it now? What a pretty name. Unusual. I'm Lynn. How's the mother of the bride? 
Don't ask. What's the matter? Nothing a handful of prescription drugs could take care of. Here, let me take care of this for you. Thank you. Just set it over there, please. And now, why don't you shampoo Miss Edison? These women have mouths to move today. Ain't that the truth? Her cofa cord is right on top. <laughs> oh, piece of cake. Mama, the color was all wrong. It looked like a stuck pig bled all over my hands. I'm sure I have something at the house that'll do. But do you have pink? Of course I have pink. It has to be delicate. If I don't have something, we'll send one of the boys to get you some delicate pink nail polish. Great idea, Mama. I'd love to see what Tommy'd pick out. Is there anything I can do to help out last minute? You've done plenty, Clary. I think we've got everything situated. We just finished borrowing every fern in North Louisiana. The boys got in last night, and they're taking care of the odds and ends. I hope the rain holds off. I hate it's not pretty today. This is perfect weather for me. I don't function well when it's hot. I love fatty days. On fatty days, I feel that God's not trying so hard, so I don't have to either. She does sweat profusely. Thank you, Mama. Well, I love the heat, but spicy foods make me sweat, especially on top of my head. My hair gets wet. I'll get it. I'll bet it's for me. It's probably my mind trying to locate my thoughts. Hello? Yes, sir. She's right here. Malin, it's for you. It's your husband. Yes? I don't know. I haven't got it. I don't have it. Drum, if you're trying to drive me crazy, you're too late. For the last time, I haven't got it. Ask the boys goodbye. What did Daddy want? Nothing. So we want to sweep it up, leave some softness around the ears? Sweep it up? Yes, Mama. Up. Like Princess Grace. Did you bring Truby the picture of Jacqueline Smith? No, I brought her the picture of Princess Grace. I destroyed the picture of Jacqueline Smith. I had thought I had made you understand the advantages of the Jacqueline Smith hairdo. No, Mama. Well, at least I talked out of that stupid idea of sticking that baby's breath up in her hair. Just keep your head in the sink, please. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. I find cold water refreshing. It just startled me a little, that's all. Truby, can I copy your recipe for strawberry pie? Sure. Now, Shelby, your mother doesn't tell us much. What's Jackson like? He's pretty swell. I thought he was a pest at first, but then he grew on me, and now I love him. Well, is he real romantic? Well, first of all, I met him down at the party at the, at the Petroleum Club in Shreveport. I had no idea who he was, but I got a big kick out of watching him on the dance floor. It was painfully obvious he had never taken the time to dance in front of the mirror before. There was something so attractive at how stupid he looked. Well, that must be romantic. Kind of. He does give me flowers and little presents if I love him enough. He's promised to give me a red rose on every anniversary corresponding to the number of that anniversary. I think it's so sweet. That is a romantic idea, isn't it, Shelby? Yes, I just wish it had been his. Lloyd now missed 50 years by three months. He tried to hang on, he just couldn't make it. Do you remember your wedding? Of course, I remember every detail. The flowers, the food. Weezer was my maid of honor. Shelby, I hope you and Jackson are as happy as Lloyd and I were. We had so much fun, up until last November. At least he held on through state playoffs. Miss Clary, there are still good times to be had. Oh, sure, but I miss the whirlwind of being the mayor's wife. It's not easy being just one. If I go somewhere with another couple on the third wheel, if I go somewhere with another friend, which is a couple of old biddies. I'm sure somebody like you could find something to occupy your time. Well, I love football, but it's hard to parlay that into a reason to live. Clary, let's just face it. You're a woman coming to terms with her grips. You and I are in the same boat. My kids are leaving town. I have a husband I haven't left in front of the TV set in 15 years. So we're just going to have to find out what we're going to put on this earth. That's the sermon for today. Now, Shelby, are you and Jackson living in West Monroe or Monroe Brown? Monroe, of course. His law practice is there. You are so lucky. Louisiana lawyers do well whether they want to or not. I don't really care. Don't get me wrong. The money's nice and all, but I like the idea of growing old with somebody. My dream is to grow old and sit on the back porch covered with grandchildren saying no and stop that. Are you going to quit nursing, Shelby? 
Never. I love it. I love being around those babies. Just last week, we had this poor little fella, two and a half months premature. He looked like a big rat. I kept on talking to him and holding him, but I knew he was never going to make it. That's so sad. It happens all the time. Drummond, I feel Shelby should not work anymore after she gets married. I'm so anxious to discuss this topic for the 900th time this week. You should not be on your feet all day. You should be kinder to your circulatory system. And now, I know you're new and all, but don't let that stop you. Anytime you have anything to say, you just let her rip. I don't have anything to say. Well, Malia, it looks like you're ready to roll. And now, do you think you can roll Miss Edison up? I don't know. Today is very special. And my work tends to be too poofy when I'm nervous. Does your dress have to go over your head? You can't screw up Mama's hair. You just tease it and make it look like a football helmet. I must have missed the passage in Emily Post that said as all abuse must be heaped on the mother of the bride. Go ahead now. I'm sure you'll do a beautiful job. It doesn't matter what I look like anyway. Now, Shelby, tell me about the wedding. How many bridesmaids? Nine. Good Lord. Exactly. The photographer is going to have to bring wide angle lenses. I think it's embarrassing and awful, but Mama made me have my cousins and Margie St. Maurice. Shelby, there was no way around it, and you know it. It will be pretentious. As Daddy always says, an ounce of pretension is worth a pound of manure. The poet laureate of Dogwood Lane. I wish you'd get off Daddy's back. He gets enough hassle from his Louisa. Well, Shelby, what are your colors? Blush and bashful. Her colors are pink and pink. Blush and bashful. I ask you, how precious is this wedding going to get? My colors are blush and bashful. I have chosen two shades of pink, and one is much deeper than the other. The bridesmaids' dresses are beautiful. And the ceremony will be, too. All the walls are banked with sprays of flowers and the two shades of blush and bashful. There's a pink carpet specially laid out for the service, and pink silk bunting draped over anything that would stand still. The sanctuary looks like it's been hosed down at Pepto-Bismol. I like pink. I tried to talk her into using peaches and cream. That would be so lovely this time of year. All the azaleas in our yard are peach colored. Peach is so flattering to every skin tone. No way. Pink is my signature color. Melina, what are your colors? Peach and cream. Clary? Beige lace to the knee. Well, I'm wearing a sexy blue chauffeur. She'll be just as going to take one look at me and leave you behind the door. Mama's dress is gorgeous. It cost more than my wedding dress. It did not. It was on sale. That's what she told Daddy. What she meant to say was that it was for sale and not on sale. Hello? Hi, Janice. I know it's an emergency, but, but I've got Shelby today. But tomorrow's Sunday. All right, I'll see you first thing in the morning. True, but you shouldn't give up your Sundays. You know how neurotic Janice Van Media is about her appearance? Janice is the current mayor's wife. We hate her. Now, she'll be filming on the reception. There's going to be ferns and twinkle lights. There'll be magnolias in the pool. I just hope your father doesn't get any magnolias from Weezer's side of the tree. We'll never hear the end of it. The wedding cake will be by the pool. The groom's cake will be hidden in the carport. Shelby and I agree on one thing. The groom's cake. It's awful. It's in the shape of a giant armadillo. An armadillo? Jackson wanted a cake in the shape of an armadillo. He has an aunt that makes them. It's unusual. It's repulsive. It has gray icing. I can't even think of how you would make gray icing. Worse, the cake part is red velvet cake. Blood red. People are going to be hacking into this animal that looks like it's bleeding to death. The rehearsal supper was an experience. It wasn't that bad. It was out of Jackson's uncle's place on the river. They served steak and baked potatoes. They went to a lot of trouble. His family likes to barbecue. For dessert, they served an original creation called Dago Pie. I think that says it all. Jackson is from a good old Southern family with good old Southern values. You either shoot it, stuff it, or marry it. 
They're simply outdoorsy, that's all. Well, did you guys do anything especially romantic? We drove down to Frenchman's Point and went parking. Shelby, really? Boy, the romantic part, that's what really melts my butter. And then we went skinny dipping and did things that frightened the fish. Shelby! <laughs> it's been a while since we had a youngster in this place, hasn't it? We talked and talked. I love those who saw Shelby in the arms of the man you love. Actually, we fought most of the time. What? Because I told him I couldn't marry him. Why would you go and do a thing like that? It's okay now. We worked it all out. It was just one of those last minute of things, right? No. But the wedding's still on. Thank goodness, because this hairstyle is going down in the hairdo hall of fame. Shelby, you scared us. You shouldn't say things like that, especially to your mama. She's marinating 50 pounds of crab foils. But the making up part can be extremely romantic. I miss, I miss romance so much. Truby, it can't be that bad. The last romantic thing my husband did for me was in 1972. He closed this carport so I could support him. Very nice to know. It looks like you know what you're doing. Thank you. Miss Ethan, you have great hair. Your scalp's clean as a whistle. I try. It must run in the family. Shelby has so pretty, so thick. Hold your head up, darling. Stop it. Shelby, Milan, Milan. Oh, honey, I'll get some juice. Truby, there's some candy in my purse. I have something right here. <laughs> Shelby, we'll get you some juice. Should I get her a cookie or? No, no. Here's the juice. juice. <laughs> Shelby, you need some juice. Leave me alone. Shelby, drink. Drink, honey. No! Who could blame a juice after a peppermint? Mama, stop it. I have candy in my purse. You didn't bring your purse, honey. Here, have a sip. No. Drink the juice, please, honey. It's not any wonder with all this wet nonsense and running around. Should I call a doctor? No, no. Shelby's a diabetic. She's got a little bit too much insulin, that's all. She'll be fine if we can get something in her. Shelby, drink. I'm gonna leave if you don't leave me alone. I'd love to see you try. Now, Shelby, cooperate. Drink. There we go. That's a That one hit her quick. Yes. She's on the pill now and her hormones are running wild. But she'll get on a even kill pretty soon. She could hurt herself in the land. What if this had happened while she'd been driving a car? Perhaps that's why I have so much gray hair. But you've known Shelby as long as I have. You know I have to let her be strong. Shelby, talk to us. No. That's good enough. <laughs> She's been so upset lately. She and Jackson have been going round and round. Dr. McCoy told her at her last appointment that children are not possible. It's not the easiest thing in the world to sit there and watch your child's heart break. Don't talk about me like I'm not here. There, she's making some sense. This one wasn't bad at all. But I still think we should have a little more juice. Is there anything I can do? No, no. She'll be fine in just a minute. But don't fuss over her. Normality is very important to Shelby. I'm sorry about the children part, Maria. I know. Shelby's afraid that Jackson might be throwing away his chance for children, but they discussed it and he seems to have taken it all right. Shelby's the one that's pushing the issue. She, he's crazy about her and said, shut up. Don't be stupid. There's plenty of kids out there that need good homes. We'll adopt 10 of them. We'll buy them if we have to. Jackson sounds like good people to me. I knew right then and there that if he was dumb enough to spend the rest of his life with me, I was dumb enough to marry him. Oh, gosh, I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Mama. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Hello? Hello? Malin, it's Tommy for Shelby. Shelby, it's Tommy. He wants to know where your car is? Absolutely not. That's the honeymoon getaway car. He just wants to defile it. Jonathan says he's been buying rubbers by the case. I'm sorry, honey. She'll just have to call you back later. All right. Thank you, Mom. Sit up straight, Shelby. It's time to gild the lily. Now, are you leaving it up after the reception? I'll be happy to give it a touch-up. I'm going to try to leave it up as long as possible. <laughs> now, 
Let me picture where the honeymoon is. I picture tropical, secluded, moonlight for days, somewhere where you can be romantic outdoors. Las Vegas. I heard the weather's going to be nice. It's like living in a flow drive. Shelby, about what Jackson's. I would rather not talk about it, Mama. What happens in my life? I will take care of him. Shelby, you can't blame people for being concerned about you. <clears throat> about what Jackson said. About children. About adoption. Was wonderful and very wise. Not being able to have children is no disgrace. Shelby, did you hear me? Mama, I know all about adoption and I know all about the limitations of the body of mine. Stupid. Finally, you're listening to reason. Now, Shelby, you're going to have to start untangling this baby's breath. Oh, Shelby, no. It's my wedding. I'll stick baby's breath up my nose if I want to. She's got it. Fine, fine. I'm supposed to be the expert on behavior and can't seem to manage the people in my own family. Oh, did you tell them, Mama? Tell us what? Oh, it's nothing, really. I might be promoted to administrator of the Mental Guidance Center. That's wonderful. The Guidance Center does so much for the disturbed. I should have taken my boys down when they were younger to straighten them out. I should have known Louie had problems when his imaginary playmates wouldn't play with him. Your boys grew up fine. They're just a little scary, that's all. But Lillian, it must be fun for you to have access to all that secret personal information. Come on, tell us some of your most bizarre cases and let us figure out who they are. I know there's some sick tickets in this town. I will not discuss office business in a social setting. People need a place they can come and unload their problems. I would never violate their confidence. When Mama says she doesn't talk, she means it. She's a brick wall. Well, you know what they say. If you don't have anything nice to say about anybody, come sit by me. Do you realize we have been rude to poor Annette? Oh. And now, we don't know her from Adam's, she doesn't know us from Adam's house, Karen. She. We've been talking about things foreign from her experiences. And now, tell us about yourself. There's nothing to tell. Well, where do you live? On the corner of Jefferson and Second. Which corner? The one where you can't see the house for the weeds. You must live in Miss Robeline's house. She's my landlady. Are you getting along with her? What's the matter with her? Nothing. Oh. Nothing. Are you happy there? She scares me. She's always watching me. Sometimes I catch her looking through my keyhole. Oh, uh, dear me. Don't worry. She's probably not taking her medication. I'll talk with her on Monday. Shelby, would you like to finish off that juice? I'm fine, Mama. You finish it. Why don't you drink it? It'll be a while before the bridesmaids lunch in. You know what you need in here, Truly? You need a radio. Music is wonderful to have in the background, and it takes the pressure off having to talk so much. I used to have one. Then I couldn't figure out where the batteries went, so I threw it against the wall. Then I knew I was a victim of pre syndrome. I've gotten four of radios for wedding presents. I'll give you one of them. How sweet. What did I hear? The Antilly family is selling the radio station. I wonder how much it's going for. A lot, but a small town radio station can be a license to print money if it's run right. Miss Clary, you should buy KPPD. You got plenty of money. What would I do with a radio station? Business never interested me much, but Lloyd took care of most of that. Shelby, why don't you drink the juice? Forget the dang juice. She'll be fine now. Besides, I always carry mints in my bag, just in case. Yeah, take some butterscotch in that dish, Clarice, put it in her bag. They are the best. They start off real hard. Once you suck all the coat enough, they get real soft. My two favorite things all in one dish, buttery and crunchy. Melinda, do you always carry candy in your purse? Without fail. Well, tell me, do you suck on this often? <laughs> Clarice, put that away. You know I don't like when people bring weapons into my shop. How'd you get Daddy's gun away from him? I had been waiting for my chance all morning. He finally put it down to go to the bathroom. I have a question. I'm new here and all. Um, is my life in danger? <laughs> no. Melinda's husband has just been shooting at some birds. 
They are out everywhere this time of year. You see, our backyard is full of fruit trees, which are full of birds. Daddy's been trying to frighten them off by making loud noises. I did not want the guests at my reception to spend all night dodging bird dew. The neighborhood is fit to be tied. Weezer Boudreaux blames my husband's gunshots for the problems of that mangy dog of hers. She insists all the noise has made that stupid animal lose its head. Saving a gun was a struggle of genius for me. I know. But what if he comes over here and tries to get it back? John would never set foot in a beauty shop. This is women's territory. He probably thinks we all run around naked or something. There's somebody coming. A strange lady with a strange dog. That would be Weezer. That is one ugly dog. What type of dog is that? If Red had hair, he'd be a collie. Lord, he loves the street. This is it. I found it. I'm in hell. Good morning, Weezer. Don't try to get on my good side, woman. I no longer have one. You're a little earlier than I expected. I wasn't expecting you till around 11-ish. Well, that's precisely why I'm here. I have to cancel. I have to take my poor dog to the vet before he has a nervous breakdown. My dog, I mean, that is perfectly fine. You. Will you go get me some water? I've been screaming all morning. I'm so sorry this whole thing has gotten out of hand, Weeza. It's not your fault, Malin. I used to think you were crazy for marrying that man. For a few years, I thought you were good for punishment. Well, now I realize you must be on some mission from God. I haven't slept in days. I look like a dog's dinner. However, this morning, I decided I'd wake up and rise above it. I would start anew. Whatever that man has done, I would overlook it in honor of your wedding day, children. So I thought I'd make myself look a little presentable and floss up the place just in case somebody would drop in, you know, it being a big day in the neighborhood and all. So I go out to cut some fresh flowers in my living room and I go down to magnolia tree and there's not one bloom on it. The judge has not decided whose tree that is exactly. It's mine. Be that as it may, it wouldn't be too much to ask to have at least one magnolia blossom to brighten my home. I am all alone except for my dog. You need something more in your life besides the dumb animal. Put a lid on it, Clary. I was standing there looking at my, my naked magnolia tree when I saw drum across the way loaded what appeared to be a cannon. I asked him what happened to all those magnolia blossoms. He said the wind blew them all off during the night. Then I asked him how the wind managed to blow them all off into your pool. Then he fired at me. Is that rude or what? They're blanks. Drum would never aim a gun at a lady. I bet he takes it just out of the sink before he pees in it. That's uncalled for. Look, all I know is my animal have, needs to be sedated. He has a condition. Are you sure that's true? Red is a very old dog. I'm simply going off of what the vet tells me. Which vet? Whitey Black. Well, there's your first mistake. Whitey Black is a moron. I'm not even sure he has opposable thoughts. But he cannot do this to my dog. He's on his last legs. What am I going to do with the poor animal? I have a lot of good recipes here. Darling, would you look out that window and check on my dog while I smack Claire real hard smart mouth? You may not believe this, but these are the dearest friends I have in this town. His color's good. His skin is real pink. I know for a fact there'll be no more gunshots. So why don't you relax, Miss Weezer? Have some coffee. Ladies, this is all going to work out beautifully. And now, why don't you shuffle Miss Weezer or Mama done with Shelby? See, life can be wonderful. All right, as long as there are no more gunshots, I'll stay. What is your name, did you tell me? I know. Fine, are you new in town? I know everybody and I don't recall seeing you before. I just moved to town not too long ago. With your family? No, I don't have any family to speak of. With your husband? My husband? That's hard to say. I don't know. You don't know. I'm not sure. I'm intrigued. Are you married or not? These are not difficult questions. He's not, we're not, I can't talk about it. Of course you can. <laughs> I don't know if I'm married or not. He's gone. Honey, men are the most horrible creatures. Bunky, that's my husband. He just vanished last week. We only moved here a month ago when he left. No idea where he went? Nobody knows. He took all the money, my jewelry, the car, half of my clothes are in the trunk. There might have been foul play. Have you been to the police? No, but they've been to me. He's in big trouble with the law. Drugs or something. They keep questioning me, but I don't know anything. They say my marriage may not be legal. You should have said something. I was scared to. 
I need a job in the worst way, and I don't know if you'd hire someone who may or may not be married to someone who might be a dangerous criminal, but I swear to you, my personal tragedy will not interfere with my ability to do good hair. <laughs> of course it won't. I really don't think things could get any worse. Of course they can. You are so brave. You must be made of courage. I'm totally alone. Checks are bouncing everywhere. Everything is going wrong. And I keep questioning myself, why me? We are awful. We are awful, hateful people. Here all we've been talking about is weddings and psychotic animals, and we've been tearing you up on the inside, haven't we? I can't tell you how sorry I am, and you've had such a terrible time. Sometimes we don't realize how lucky we are. Is there anything we can do to help? I know one thing I can do. Tonight you're going to stop by my house and have some bleeding armadillo grooms cake. It's going to be a great party. Oh, I couldn't. I still get real emotional sometimes. I can't stand the thought of anyone being unhappy or alone tonight. And if you feel yourself starting to get sad, just watch my husband dance. It's very funny. You're all so nice. We enjoy being nice to each other. There's nothing else to do in this town. But I don't have anything to wear. Not a problem. I bet I'll have something that'll do. I'll call the house. Now, Anil, if you're interested, give me a day or two to sweep the things out and straighten it up, and you can take a look at my garage apartment. We can work out something with the ring. Oh, uh, good. Jonathan, I need you to do me a favor. Yes, now. Go into my closet and pick out two or three of my Sunday things. Just anything. Use your judgment. Fine. Bring me the pink dress with the white collar, the pink suit with the cherries pinned on the front, and the pink and white polka dot. No, Jonathan, Mama doesn't have Daddy's gun. Don't you have better things to do? What? Well, stop them. Now! Is something the matter? We'll see. Yes. What the hell? <laughs>
Alan Jackson's bed. What a treat. Creatures. You must not have visited long. No, I could tell they were anxious to start killing things. We stopped by the house first. No one was home. Where's Trudy? She and a nail are out back sticking pennies in the fuse box. They decorated the little tree, and when I plugged it in, a whole the lights blew. What are those things? Red velvet poinsettia earrings. They are a gift from a nail. She has discovered the wonderful world of arts and crafts. <laughs> Yes, Jonathan got in yesterday morning. He loves his classes. It's all he can talk about. I think the main thing the architecture school, the architecture school has taught him is how much he should hate his parents' house. Tommy got in last night and he immediately started terrorizing your father. It's nice having a family home for Christmas. Some things never change. And how are you, dear? I'm so good, Mama. Just great. You're looking well. Is Jackson back at the house? No, you know how twitchy he gets. I sent him to look for stock and stuff. It's good thinking. Um, uh, Jackson and I had something we wanted to tell you. We wanted to tell you when you and Daddy were together, but you're never together, so it's every man for himself. I'm pregnant. Shelby. I'm gonna have a baby. <laughs> I realized that. Well, is that it? Is that all you're going to say? What do you expect me to say? Something along the lines of congratulations. Congratulations. Would it be too much to ask for a little excitement? Not too much. I wouldn't want you to break a sweat or anything. I'm in a state of shock. I didn't think that you in would... In June, oh, Mama, you're going to have to help me plan. We're going to get a new house. Jackson and I are going house hunting next week. Jackson loves to hunt for anything. And what does Jackson say about this? Oh, he's very excited. He says he doesn't care whether it's a boy or a girl, but I know he wants a son so bad he can taste it. He's so cute about the whole thing, it's all he can talk about. And Jackson Latchery Jr. But does he ever listen? I mean, when doctors and specialists give you advice, I know you never listen, but does he? I guess since he doesn't have to carry the baby, it doesn't really concern him. I'm not mad, Shelby. I just... <clears throat> I don't know. Mama, I want a child. What about the adoption proceedings? You filed so many applications. People do it all the time. And you worry too much. In some ways, it's a comfort to me. I never worry because I know you're worrying enough for both of us. Jackson missed a lot of thought. Has he really? Well, there's a first time for everything. Don't start on that. Shelby, your poor body has been through so much. Why would you deliberately want to go and do You are special. There are limits to what you can do. Mama, listen. I have it all planned out. I'm going to be very careful. And this time next year, I'm going to be bringing your big, healthy grandbaby to the Christmas festival. No one's going to be hurt or disappointed or even inconvenient. <sighs> Least of all, Jackson, I'm sure. You're just jealous because you no longer have a say-so in what I do. And that drives you up the wall. You're ready to spit nails because you can no longer call the shot. I did not raise my daughter to talk to me this way. Yes, you did. Whenever any of us asked you what you wanted us to be when we grew up, what did you say? Shelby, I am not in the mood to play games. What did you say? Just tell me what you said, Mama. Answer me. I said all I wanted was for you to be happy. I just want you to be happy about it too.
I wish that... I don't know what I wish. Mama, I don't know why you have to make everything so difficult. I look at having this baby as the opportunity of a lifetime. Sure, there's reason. And now, you did all this? Yeah, you just turned over the decoration responsibility to me. I like things, and I despise the commercialization of Christmas. So I went to the fire sale at the Baptist bookstore in Shreveport last month. They have Miss Maggie Mangerstein's at incredibly low prices. I claim the mind of baby Jesus, which truly his husband helped me mind to find some ornaments. Very simple. Tiny lights, baby Jesus, and spoons. My husband has to done poo's old room, so she will have a place for all her handicrafts. The garage apartment was just so cramped. Isn't that nice? Are your boys coming home for Christmas? No. Louie came home for Thanksgiving, and the only nice thing I ever said about his girlfriend was that all her tattoos were spelled correctly. I guess it's just me, the old man in the nail. Here, do the missus. Do the honors. Let's go. I know your mama is so happy you can make it in town for the festival. I heard it's going to be the best ever. More lights, a nativity made especially of sparkles, and a big new sign down at the riverbank that says, Our Heart Chicken Pan Harris. Hey, guess who the, new, guess who the uh, Grand Marshal for the parade for the parade's going to be? Wayne Newton. I wouldn't miss a Christmas festival for the world. Oh. That doesn't sound like finger food to me. That's right, sir. Like, Vaughn, uh, I'm sure you know what you're doing. Anil? Perfect. Oh, and Mama? Well, I'm thinking. I've been Get me. I thought your patients might be a little less disturbed if they had. Anil, the chair. Uh, excuse me, Shelby, if you don't have any special plans for those clothes, could I have them? Riverview Baptist has a clothes closet for the poor, and we're real low on women's dresses. Sure, that's a wonderful idea. They're in the car. I'll get them in a minute. It just breaks my heart that she won't come down to the Methodist church for me. I told her, Riverview Baptist is a little bit too. Praise the Lord for my taste. Well, some of them do get a little carried away, but there's nothing wrong with that. No, a lot of mom's mental patients are born. Best sense of the word. We're just glad to see that Anil is settling down and finding her way. She has had a rough few months, haven't you, Anil? Oh, after they finally threw Bunky to pee behind bars, I went wild. I was drinking, running around, smoking. Jezebel. But Truva helped me see the air of my ways. I realized I have something to offer. I joined the church last month. Truva helped me realize that I have talent. I've done sketch lectures on beauty at the trade school. She has become one of the hottest tickets in town. Truly, stop. I am enjoying the city more. I wanted to come to the Christmas festival all my life, and now I live here. Tell her who you have a date with. Truly, will you hush? Tell her, Missy, she was responsible for the whole thing. Sammy DeSoto. He has a body that doesn't stop me anywhere. <laughs> How am I responsible? He was born taking that your wedding reception last spring. That's where I met him. He makes a mean cherry coke. Romance. That's what I love for. Now, Shelby, can we do anything for you today? I'm beyond her. Honey, time marches on, and eventually it marches right across your face. How are you feeling? Never better. My annual contacties. <coughs> There's my girl. I guess she's the only happy one this morning. Yes, I am for a state championship in eight years.
Hello, darling. Can I get you some tea? Yes, that'd be nice. I'm sorry I'm late. I didn't get in till 1 o'clock. I overslept. It was a dazzling victory against Jabbar. I heard you on the radio last night. You were wonderful. I would then let me be the color announcer for the devils. I was fabulous. I was too cha cha for words. Nice, nah, nothing. I own the radio station. Oh, God. Yes, KPPD, station choice that you can compare. Do you like her new short and sassy looks? I love it. Just wait till I jack it up. Ooh. It makes you look younger, Miss Clary. My hair looks younger, my face looks just as old. There's so much going on. The state championship last night, the Christmas festival today, the Messiah sing along tomorrow. Life in a big city will spoil you now. Who won Miss Mary Christmas this year? My niece Nancy Beth, of course. She was here at 7 o'clock this morning. I had to position her tiara so it wouldn't fall off during the parade. I sprayed that girl's hair within an inch of its life. Nancy Beth is a pretty girl. You know she won more soybean, Miss Merry Christmas, and Miss Watermelon. But dumb as a post. Empty is the head that wears the crown. You know, I have to admit, God did a little dance around that family. Drew is so successful. Belle does her own hair. They're like a family on TV. They don't have a problem in the world. Uh, that's not exactly true. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Oh. Shelby, we told you at the time, fire batons are not everyone's cup of tea. Mama didn't approve of my twirling fire batons. I just don't approve when you insist on doing dangerous things. Mama hated those fire batons. I've never hated anything, Shelby. I supported you. I just couldn't watch you. Your father, on the other hand, had a field day. He got so much pleasure out of standing in the backyards for hours watching you practice. Holding the garden hose, ready to put you out when you caught fire. My entire pageant ensemble was coordinated in shades of pink. Soup to nuts. Oh, I told them you can do fire above. It was my theme song. But we were proud of her. The year I competed in the swimsuit competition was my downfall. Most women look for swimsuits that will lift and separate. I look for ones that will divide and conquer. I was not built for speed. I was built for comfort. Oh, child, nobody. They didn't even have the Christmas festival when I was in high school. In fact, Jesus himself wasn't even born until I was a junior in college. I remember the night distinctly. Me and my friends were watching our flocks by night. Get up there so I know can get up your hair, Clary. I could just spit. Morning, Lisa. <laughs> the parade doesn't even start for four hours and people are already parking on my lawn. It will flood my grass. Here. Let me hold you. I hate out of town tourists. Hello. What are you doing here? Being a tourist, I bet. But I'll flatten the grass, I promise. Good God, you had the good enough sense to move away from all this festival madness. I can't understand why you drag yourself back to a couple of firecrackers and drunk teenagers earring on your shoes. I like it. Miss Weasel, I think you need a healthy dose of Christmas spirit. I have so much Christmas spirit, I can scream. Merry Christmas. I just finished putting up my yard decorations. Uh, Weezer, keep off the grass signs are not yard decorations. But they're bordered in holly. <laughs> you made these, didn't you? With my own two hands? Well, your present is um, back at the house. I didn't wrap it yet. <laughs> He's coming along as a matter of fact. He's the poster dog for the Christmas festival. That is red. I didn't recognize him. It's nice to see Red with some hair again. Well, I have some errands I have to run. But before I go, Miss Weezer, I met an old friend of yours. Oh. 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 Owen oh, Jenkins. Now there's a blast from the past. Do you remember him? Here. Of course I remember him. He had the longest nose hair in the free world. He doesn't now. He hardly has any hair anywhere. Owen Jenkins has been gone from pins since God was a boy. I forgot he even existed. He asked me if I knew you. 
I said, not only did I know you, but you were a neighbor and that your dog had almost killed my father on several occasions. He's lived a very interesting life. He used to live up in Ohio. His wife passed away recently and he moved back down here. Does this store have a point? <laughs> no, not really. I just think he remembers you fondly, that's all. Of course I remember him. He wasn't a bad fellow. I just managed to run him off and marry the two of first the two first the first of two total deadbeats, excuse me. Unrequited love, my favorite. Maybe sometime I can arrange for all of us to get together? Maybe not. Shelby, in just a few decades, I managed to marry the two most worthless men in the universe and proceed to have the three most ungrateful children ever conceived. The only reason people like me is because I have more money than God. I would not be open a new can of worms. Do I detect the negativity in your tone? Weeza, if this is really the way you feel, it's not healthy. Maybe you should think about coming down and talking to someone at the guidance center. With that help? Honey, I'm not crazy. I've just been in a very bad mood for 40 years. <laughs> well, I've got to get the clothes. What would you like me to do with them? They're in the back seat. Just bring them in. And then I'm going to go finish my Christmas shopping, Mom. Okay. I'll shoot you. I haven't even started. Please, I haven't even washed the dishes from Thanksgiving. <laughs> What'd you get your mom? I told her what part of it was this morning. Spill it, Lizzie. I think it's a secret. Obviously, there's no such thing in this room. It's up to you, honey. You <gasps> Congratulations! I guess that's why you've been so quiet, my land. Grandma, smile. It increases your face value. You and the doctor said you couldn't have children. I guess you showed them. The doctor said Shelby shouldn't have children. There's a big difference. I guess you showed us all, Shelby. Well, I've got to get the clothes. But, Miss Weasel, are you bringing your shrimp meat pies to the open house tonight? Don't I always? They'll be there. Good. So, oh, I opened a can of worms for you. <laughs> I can't believe she did that. Oh, and after all these years, I don't think I can be gracious under all this pressure. Shelby, Shelby. Her heart does get the best of her sometimes. I guess the baby wasn't good news, was it, Marie? She wants this so badly. I just don't know. Oh boy. I wish I had a words of wisdom to say, but I just don't. Maybe we should focus on the joy of the situation. Congratulations. Absolutely. Thank you, ladies. And you're right. You know what they say. That which does not kill us makes us stronger. What is that girl up to? Shelby's donating clothes to the poor. Well, I hope poor people like pink. Just put them on the couch. Miss Mullen, you sure you don't mind me taking these clothes? If your pages look deep then. No, no. Shelby said you could have them. And what she says goes. That's not true, Mama. Shelby, you always insist on having the last word. I do not.
I guess. It was only about 9.30, I suppose. Someone is knocking on my bedroom window after dark would have scared the daylights out of me. Not me. Postmates and Colonel, I suppose. I was a little disappointed to find it was only my nephew. Oh, gosh, it's so weird. Uh, I did what you wanted, didn't I, honey? Yes, of, of course. I, I didn't mean... <coughs> you did a beautiful job. I've just never had short hair, that's all. This is what we Cosmo girls call a righty passage? I'm sorry. I'm being so ridiculous. Shelby, it's okay. Please don't cry because you know. You know I will, too. I have a strict policy that no one cries alone in my presence. Ladies, ladies, remind me to never take these two to see Dr. Victory, they never survive. <laughs> no, I love my hair. <sighs> my art system nature is so relieved. <laughs> it's very becoming. I guess for that baby, you don't have time to spend hours fussing with your hair. You need something you can just bring things to and go. You're totally adorable. Your mother's going to love it. Mom's going to freak out. She thinks I'm just getting a trend. I was not to have been debate with now, truly? Alright. What a treat. No one ever wants to manage you around here. I want the works. I want to feel completely heavenly. That's it. Well, I'm going to paint my front door red and change my name to Elizabeth Arden. Manicure, saucy new hairdos. What's going on? You're always up to something. You know that. But I want to get back to the family. I hope they reconcile the Marshall. Speaking as a parent, they better to their actions. I'm sure it'll all blow over. Marshall didn't really handle it the right way. What did he do? He flew in unexpected from Los Angeles while Drew and Belle would get ready for the annual Marmillion Trimble, and without so much as a hello, he says, Mom and Daddy, I have something to tell you. I have a brain tumor and I have three months to live. Naturally, Drew and Belle became hysterical. And then Marshall says, Hey folks, I'm just kidding, I'm only gay. Went shrimp at him. Marsha came over to my house and I was camp cat. What do you think, Joan Bella feeling? I don't know. They thought they were the model family for so long. And then after Nancy Beth got the Jerome from her Miss Merry Christmas title after that whole motel thing. What motel thing? I don't live here anymore, remember? Nancy Beth was discovered in a nearby hotel with a high political official. They were both high. They were smoking everything but the sheep. To be the only Miss May Christmas card with her tinsel around her knees must have been a very humiliating experience for the Marmillia family. How do you feel about Marshall? I haven't really thought about it, but I want you to know he's always welcome at my house. I've always adored Marshall. He he brought he put, built that chain of sports restaurants up all by himself without a penny of family money. He always said, I'm a self-made man, I brought myself up by my own job straps. He could always turn a phrase. Uh, amen. Amen. A nail, a mod of the stuff that I do next to No, it's over the second. Okay. Alright. What's your name? Yes. What? I don't know. Maybe she was praying for Drew, Barsham, and Bell. Maybe she was praying for us because we were gossiping. Maybe she's praying because the elastic in between her pantyhose is shot. I don't know, but she prays at the drop of a hat these days. Ever since Mardi Gras, she had the choice of going to a Bible weekend with her Sunday school class or to go to New Orleans with me and two other sinners. Well, she left that Friday a well-adjusted young lady and she came back Saturday a Christian. What's your boyfriend say? so confused. He doesn't know whether to scratch his watch or wind his butt. He's crazy about her. He says he can deal with another man in her life, but he has problems with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm torn. I've got two sons who I'm afraid are going to hell in a handcart, and a silly daughter who strives to be the type of girl Jesus would want to take home to mama. I don't know. 
these people have a sort of joy about them that I just don't have. Maybe I'm jealous. And Marshall is so thoughtful, he bought me this pin. It's gold and a nail. It's a bug. It's fine jewelry. It's eyes a little roots. My birdstone. Marshall has a, you know, friends. We talked a little bit about that. I'm such a nosy old thing. I asked him how he <laughs> met people. In my day, you could tell by a man's carriage and demeanor which shot his blood was voted on. But today, who knows? I asked him, how can you tell? And he said, all gay men have track light, and all gay men are named Mark, Rick, or Steve. He's such a nut, track light. <laughs> Morning. Morning, Louisa. What's so funny? Miss Clary was just telling us the true story of track light. Oh, I love mine. It highlights my new artwork. Since when do you have track light? About three weeks now. It's up in my foyer. It was my grandson's idea. Steve's fine. <laughs> anyway, I brought you all some tomatoes. First of the season. I didn't expect to see you here, Shelby. Well, I'm here. Well, take some tomatoes back home with you. There's plenty. Your hair short looks good. Thanks, Miss Louisa. Dad Junior loves tomatoes. The shears on the cafe curtains in the kitchen. Your mother told us you have become an incredible gourmet cook. Clary, how many tomatoes do you want? They don't have calories and are full of things. Weezer, you're almost chipper today. Did you run over a small child or something? Do you or do you not want tomatoes? Don't give me all of them. Well, somebody's got to take them. I can't keep them all. I think the sooner this body wears out, the better off I'll be. I already have enough trouble getting greasy to my diet. Then why do you grow them? Because I'm an old southern woman. We're supposed to wear ugly looking dresses and funny looking hats and grow vegetables in the dirt. Don't ask me why, I don't make the rules. You need a pair of gloves. Your hands look like a couple of T-bone steaks. Health is the most important thing, Miss Louisa. Trust me on this. And while I have everyone's attention, I went down to my mailbox this morning and found that someone has put me on the mailing list for the Riverview Baptist Church. I am not receiving chain letters from Christ. They aren't chain letters. They're part of my prayer group to reach out in touch project. We're each supposed to write someone down in the community who we thought might be in spiritual trouble and invite them to worship. I guess you made everybody's list. I think it's in the worst possible taste of perfect, perfect strangers. Reach out to Reza and Yoko Black back a bloody stump. Shelby, that reminds me, you saved me a phone call. Sister Rell and I are driving up to McGraw next Friday. We want to take you and Jackson to dinner. This might sound a little silly, but we're going to the little theater. We're going to see a play. I don't know you want to see anything that didn't have a gold post on either end. Up until now, I haven't. But Sister and I decided at bridge one day that we needed to keep up. We wanted to expose ourselves to a little culture. Hard to come by in this neck of the woods. Exactly what are you exposing yourself to? I don't know. Something. The last thing we saw that was pretty good, it was Shakespeare. I was a little apprehensive at first, but when you get right down to it, you write pretty straightforward stuff. I have to admit, when they started hiding behind the curtains and putting on masks, it started getting a little silly. Sis fell for it, but I didn't. Cicerella's so dumb. She thinks Sherlock Holmes is a subdivision. Anyway, we're going, we like it so much that we're going to New York. New York, Clary, I'm green with it. I've always wanted to go. Promise me you'll go to the first floor of Bloomingdale's and tell me everything. Family Circle says it's impossible to go there and not get made up. We're just talking. I'm scared to death of getting on a plane. It's a piece of cake. You're safer on a plane than in the car. Just sit in the rear. That's the easiest way to survive a plane crash. Miss Lisa, why don't you go to the Mr. Larry? I'm not exposed myself to anything. You need to broaden your horizons. You broaden your horizons your way, not broaden my horizons mine. I have plans next Friday. I'm going down to Shreveport to get my colors done. Your what? I'm going to get my colors done. I'm going to find out if I'm a summer, spring, fall, or winter. It was a present from Oak. What are you talking about? Every person has a particular color, summer, spring, and so on. You determine what cities you are, then you know what colors look best on you. Then you're given a sample of colors that are in your palette, and it's most helpful when shopping for clothes. It gives you fashion courage. 
That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. It's all the rage. A lot of my friends in Monroe had it done. There's an article in gla that glamour over there. I'm the epitome of a winter. Shiva, why don't you have it done? You're so fashion conscious. No way. I'm scared to. I might find out that pink snuck my palette, and I'm not sure I can live that. I have heard it all. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to the theater to support the arts in my area. And I'll write a check. I will support art. I just don't want to see it. It wouldn't handle it, you know. Let's get one thing straight. I don't see plays because I can nap at home for free. I don't see movies because they're all trash and full of naked people. And I don't read books because if they're any good, they'd be made into miniseries. I'm surprised you and Daddy don't get along any better than you do. But Miss Weezer, how are things with Owen? I try to keep up with you, but I haven't been able to. They're all right. I enjoy his company on occasion. I can report that the Sherwood Floors delivery truck stops by her house at least twice a week. He knows I like fresh flowers. I can also report that there's a strange car parked in her garage at least once a week. There, the secret's out. I'm having an affair with the Mercedes Benz. Weeza, I've been down to ask you, are you an Owen? You know. <laughs> wait, 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 I have to get a mental picture of this. A dirty mind is a terrible thing to waste. Not that it's anyone's business, but no. He would like more. I'm dealing with that, but I am old and set in my ways. You are playing hard to get. She, at her age, she should be playing beat the clock. She's just like her dog. They're both stuck in the old tricks. You know I don't like trash talking in my shop. I can't help it if men find me desirable. Shelby, where's that picture of the baby? Oh, I brought it with me. It's in my purse. Let me see. Has he gained any weight? He's about 15 pounds now. God, he is a tiny thing. He only weighs about a pound and a half when he was born, but he'll catch up. Give him time. Boy, bless his heart. Those were some anxious hours, weren't they? We didn't know who to be more worried about you with that baby. I certainly wouldn't recommend having a baby three months premature. I get upset just thinking about it. Well, let's go. Yep, Jack Jr. is a little fire, and he's going to wear me out. I wish I knew where you got all that energy. Don't do it all yourself, honey. Get that husband of yours to help. They're supposed to be helping on this decade. He helps, I suppose. Mama doesn't think he does, but he does. Sometimes. When he thinks about it, which isn't often. And most of the time, he doesn't do a dang thing, and every weekend, he's off hunting. But he is a good provider, right? Yes, that's true. Honey, he'll come around, and when he does, you run and tell me so I can get to work and let Sophie's love on Mary too. This one's pretty. I thought so. Proud of passion. It's luscious without being sleazy. Now, ladies, next Saturday we're going to have to make time adjustments. And now is taking a well-deserved vacation. That's nice. Are you taking a trip? Yes, I am. Aren't you going to tell us where you're going? No. Please, Danelle, I don't know how I'll live without this useful information. You just make fun. But now, you know I love it when you go on and on about your spiritual growth. I just can't get enough. She's taking a very nice trip to Camp Crossroads in the Ozark. I don't think I've ever heard of Camp Crossroads. It's in the middle of Arkansas. It's a Christian camp. There's just cabins, a chapel, a dining hall in the middle of the lake. I will spend a week in Bible study, <laughs> Bible study, meditation, and prayer. You're in the middle of nature surrounded by the beauty of the Lord. <laughs> Are there water beds? Wait, the link her alone. <laughs> what? I want to know more about this camp cross sign. I might want to go. That's a laugh. You've never done a religious thing in your life. That's not true. Back in high school, a bunch of my friends and I would dress up as nuns and go bar hopping. <laughs> <laughs> Is your boyfriend going with you? No, he said he'd rather eat the dirt. Anyway, I have to make sure my granddaughter goes to the Episcopal Church. This born again process is awfully tedious. Miss Wiz, I have to say this, and I don't mean to hurt you, but I worry about your faith sometimes. Oh, my faith is fine. It's my hair that needed the most work. Weasel, one day somebody's going to cut the feet out of your stockings. Weasel, have you no shame? Oh, that's all right, Trudy. I love Miss Weasel. I pray for her every day, sometimes twice. <laughs> Morning, everybody. Shelby. Mama, please don't say anything. I like it. It'll be so much easier to deal with. Oh, honey, bless your heart. It'll draw so quick.
thinking, all I have to do is run my fingers through it. The last time you had short hair was kindergarten. I know. I decided today that I'm going to get it all cut off every 25 years. I love it. I do. It's not too perky, is it? It looks great. How are you doing? I'm fine, Mom. How are you? and never having any tension, which is surprising considering the amount he has created over the years. Listen to me. I have got to stop taking pot shots at drum all the time. He's a good man. He's crazy, but he's a good man. And he seems to be behaving himself lately. He was most civil in the Piggly Wiggly yesterday, and I was caught off guard. I smiled before I could help myself. The most bizarre thing has happened. Drum and I seem to be rediscovering those things which brought us together in the first place. I don't know if we buried them or just became blind to them. You see, the thought of our parents being romantic made me and my brother sick to our stomachs. But it's actually very sweet. It's been a lovely week. Every now and then, Drum and I seem to find these moments of magic. I don't know. I don't know if I'm lucky to have what I have or lucky to know what I have. That's too deep for me. That's what my ties were taken. Miss Lisa, you know what, Melinda? I think you should write a romance novel based on your recent experiences. I can help you with the dirty parts. <laughs> no one would believe it. Uh, Shelby, you're looking a little pale. I'm fine, Mom. How are you? Well, ladies, if you're out and about this afternoon, stop by the Dixie Plaza Shopping Center. The radio station is putting on a summer fiesta. There's going to be prizes and a, lot, and a live band. They call themselves the single woman people. Shelby, what have you been doing? Oh, it doesn't hurt. Melinda, have you seen this? Yes, I have. The doctor's just been trying to strengthen my veins. They're in terrible shape. It looks like you've been dropping nails into your arms. What's going on? Shall we tell them, Mama? I guess so. There's no point in keeping it a secret any longer. Shelby has been driving nails into her arms. It's my dialysis. What? My dialysis. It's when the dialysis I know what it is. Please tell us what's going on, honey. It's not any big thing. No big thing. Stop looking at me like that. How long have you been doing this dialysis? A couple of months. Mary Lynn Aiton. Why haven't I been told I'm without words? We, there is no point. What would have been the point? There's nothing you could do. We could have done something. I can't believe this. This is very selfish. Very selfish. Hold it. You're all talking like this is something. This isn't something? Having Jack Jr. just put too much strain on my kidneys and now they're put. That's all. The doctor said this would probably happen. That's all. That's all she says. I'm responding beautifully to dialysis. Do I look bad? You look beautiful. Well, like aren't you going to let us in on what's going to happen? Do you do this dialysis forever? Is it that easy? Sure. They do them in Shreveport all the time. Three or four a week. They do. My Sunday school class was praying for one just the other day. But the hard part is finding a kidney, isn't it? I saw something about it on the news. It was very dramatic. The doctors saw all over the place looking for hearts and organs. But the worst part about it is they put the organs in their beer coolers. Clary, stop. I would not lie in a moment as serious as this. The doctors take out their six packs, put in some dry ice and a heart, and they're on their way. She's right. But you never know when one will pop up, do you? No, I'm registered on the Nation Podcast. 
transplant computer. How long do you have to wait? There are some people on dialysis that have been waiting for years. That must be agony. I suppose, but I'm lucky. I don't have to wait any longer. But Mama's going to give me one of her kidneys. When? We check in tomorrow morning. You're giving Shelby a kidney tomorrow. This is the first we're hearing about it. Truly, could you work on my hair? I'm in a bit of a rush. There has never been a time where words would fail me, but this is one. Why didn't you tell us? We just told you. We haven't known long. We were just tested last week. I'm the closest match. What do you mean match? There are four categories for an organ transplant. I'm the best match. Categories? I'm going to Yankee Bald Headed Smarty. We are very upset here. Our past have said a long time ago. I'm sorry. That was Tommy's joke. I think it's very funny. No wonder the whole family is in town. I'm just so relieved it was me. The boys are so young. I would never want them to go through with it. And who would want one of drums mean old organs? But the best part about it, with all the tests and stuff, I have discovered I have the constitution of someone ten years younger. How about that? It must be so painful. Not really for me. My operation is simple. Mama's is awful. They basically have to saw her and have to get her through with major, major surgery. They have to saw you in half? They do it on Circus of the Stars all the time. This is no laughing matter. It'll make my waist smaller. They have to take my bottom ribs out to get my kidney. Cherry had her ribs taken out to have a smaller waist. Please, that one's out of her mind. Look, Shelby, earlier I said I'd be better off when this body wears out. I didn't mean that. You know better than to listen to anything I say. Miss Weezer, forget it. Well, I, I am a terrible person. Weezer, no you're not. You give your dog a kidney if you needed one. Absolutely. But you two seem so calm and collected. Um, I'm so happy. Look at the opportunity I have. Most mothers only get the chance to give their child love once. I get the chance to do it twice. I think it's neat. And Shelby needs her health to chase after that rambunctious child of hers. I have two kidneys, and I only need one. I'm just glad we can get it over with before it gets too hot. Ain't that the truth? I'm going to postpone my vacation today so I can sit with your husband during the operation. I can run and get Coca-Cola's and things. That's sweet of you, but don't change your plans. And now make sure Drum has enough food. Put your house out of your mind. You won't have to worry about a thing. I appreciate that. And I know Drum does too. Malin, you are so brave. You know, Shelby, if I didn't know any better, I wouldn't even know you've been sick a day in your life. That's the biggest compliment anyone's ever paid me. Poor Shelby. Don't say that. I have my baby. I'm very happy. If this is the price I have to pay, then I have to pay. I can deal with that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe somebody has a present for this. Is it for me? Only if you can wear a size 4. I can take it in. <laughs> Mama, would you? Sure. <clears throat> it's just a little something I picked up. Uh, it was on sale. Truthfully. Ladies, do I look fabulous or what? God bless you, Shelby. You're going to be the sassiest girl in that house, baby. What about me? You ladies better come visit us. I'll be right there by your side when you wake up. You're a super lady. I'll manage it somehow. And now I'll keep John calm during the operation. We're in such good hands. Mama, you're going to be a while, so I'm going to head back to the house to see Daddy come. Good. Drum is not taking this very well. He gets so emotional over the least little thing. Truby, this is probably going to gross you out, but could I have my hair? Is that too repulsive? People do it all the time. I've had it for so long, I guess it represents an error or something. But you're not, I'll give it to your mama. I love you all. Miss Perry, would you do something for me? Of course. I'll tell them today.
As they rolled it down, she said, Mama, I'm going to feel so good when this is over. They gave her the anesthetic. In a way, she was right. Maybe she knew she was going to be with her king. Yes, I know. Maybe so. We should be rejoicing. You go ahead. I wish I could. I guess I'm a little selfish. I'd rather have her here. Miss Millen, I don't mean to upset you by saying that. You see, when things like this happen, I prayed very hard to make heads or tails of it. And I think in Shelby's case, she just wanted to take care of you, of that baby, of everyone she knew. And her poor body was just so worn out. It wouldn't let her do all the things she wanted to do. So she went on to a place where she could be a guardian angel. She will always be young, and she will always be beautiful. And I personally feel much safer knowing she's up there on my side. And I know it sounds real simple and stupid, and maybe I am, but that's just how I get you things like this. Thank you, Annette. I appreciate that. And that's a very good idea. Shelby, as you know, would not want us to get all mired down and wobble in this. She would look on it just as one of life's occurrences. So we should deal with it the best way we know how, and get on with it. That's what my mind says. I wish someone could explain it to my heart. Thomas said you didn't leave her side? Well, I wasn't in the mood to play bridge. No, I couldn't leave my Shelby. It's interesting. Both boys were very difficult births. I almost died when Jonathan was born. Very difficult births. But Shelby was a breeze. I could have gone home that afternoon I had. That's what I was thinking about as I sat next to Shelby while she was in the coma. I would work her legs and arms to keep the circulation going. I told the ICU nurse we were doing our Jane Fonda. I stayed there. I kept pushing, like I always did where Shelby was concerned. But finally, we realized there was no hope. At that point, I panicked. I did not think I was going to survive the next few minutes as they turned the machines off. Drum couldn't take it. He left. And Jackson couldn't take it. He left. It struck me as amusing. Men are supposed to be made out of steel or something. But I just couldn't leave. I stayed there holding Shelby's hand. As the sounds got softer. And the beeps got farther apart. Until all was quiet. There was no noise, no tremble, just peace. Well, I don't know how your insides do, are doing, but your hair is holding up beautifully. Did you have a dentist for your port? No, I did it myself. Hold it, Missy, I don't want to hear that kind of talk. All I had to do was straighten out the rough patches. You know, I'm going to be looking for help when your nail goes on maternity leave. Are you interested? With everything going on, I don't know if I would have time if I would feel like coming here. But this morning, I wanted to come here more than anything. Is that silly? No. Last night, I went to Shelby's closet looking for something. And guess what I found? All our Christmas presents stacked up, wrapped, with the own two hands. I better go. Check the bag. Perfect. As always. Shelby. Shelby's right. Does look like a football helmet. Come sit right back down. Are you okay? Can you feel it? Yes. I'm fine. I'm great. I can run to Texas and back. My daughter can't. She never could. I want to know why. I want to know why Shelby's life is over. Is that baby ever going Now, can I tell, Lillian? 
told me. Malin, you just missed the chance of a lifetime. Most of Jacob and Parrish give their eye teeth to take a whack at Weezer. You are a pig from hell. <laughs> okay. All right. Hit me then. I deserve it. You want to piss God off if you're not careful, Clary. Whatever will we do without your own special brand of humor? You are evil and you must be destroyed. Darling, Mother Nature's take care, taking care of that faster than you could. Things were getting entirely too serious for a moment. I'm sorry, Malin. We're all entitled to our sorrow. It was very funny, Clary. I have to admit I laughed, even though that wasn't a very Christian thing to do, Miss Clary. Oh, now, honey, you're going to have to lighten up. My husband says the same thing. I bet Lloyd got a kick out of that one. Lloyd did get a lot of enjoyment at my expense when he was alive. Lloyd adored Shelby. I'm sure she's up there. He's up there right now, fixing his feed tickets and showing her around. Shelby was always crazy about Lloyd. She worshipped the quicksand he walked on, and I'm sure when she got up there, Lloyd was happy to see a familiar face. He was a Louisiana politician. We don't know many people who went to heaven. Clary, <coughs> Weezer, you know I love you more than my luggage. You are too twisted for color TV. Thank you. <laughs> now that you two have made up, we gotta let this woman go. She cannot be a pillar of strength with the eye makeup running down her neck. Go on out there, Miss Mullen. We'll be just fine. I shouldn't have gone on like I did. I made everybody cry. I'm so sorry. It's okay, honey. Laughter through tears is my favorite emotion. Maybe it was about time I had an emotional outburst. Maybe I'll start having them at home more often. Drum will be so pleased. I'm so glad I came by this morning. Shelby would have had a good time here. I'm sure she did. Malene, tell your family, especially the drum, that you've been in my prayers. Yes or no, I pray. I have suspected this all along. But don't you go trying to invite me to one of those temper revivals with all those Bible beaters doing God only knows what. They probably make even they probably make me eat a live chicken or something. Not on your first visit. Very good at nails, looking like a true smart ass. Anyway, Malin, oh, I wanted me to tell you that you've been in his thoughts. I didn't think that you and Owen were. He's coming in Monday to take me to Shelby's service. That girl would do anything to keep us together. I'd better go. Malin, promise me you promise me you'll call me if you need anything. And if her line's busy, you call me. Call me. I got call waiting. Just got it. I will. Oh, Miss Boleyn, I wanted to tell you that Siri and I decided that if it's a girl, we wanted to name it Shelby, since she's the reason we met in the first place, if you don't mind. Mind? I'm tickled pink. Pink. What do you name it if it's a boy? Shelby, I guess. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Life goes on. And Malin, if you ever feel like you want to take a whack out of something, you come over here and take a whack out of me. I won't break. I may take you up on that. You all have no idea how wonderful you are. Of course we do. Come back again.